Hello and welcome to this new version of Tutorial 114 DT and this is a second program, the first one 114 created boxes or rectangles using the BN point which is a, an object for defining a point on the chart. This one uses the DT point. And as you'll see, what we're doing is we're adding effectively 10 boxes. We're, we've got two different time ranges. You can see here, the first one is between 2300 and 130 in the morning. The other one is between four and 930. And then we can specify the values of the high and the low, the high and the low for each of those rectangles, as well as the color and the transparency, etc. Let me uh, show you the inputs and then we can go into the program. So we have the start time and the end time, start time and end time for the two different blocks of blocks. And then we have the zone high, low, color and shading and transparency for each of the zones, which I've numbered zone one to five. Another thing I've added here is extend right. And what this does, in fact, I think what I'll do is just uh, show you is if we have a box that is currently being formed, for example, um, you can see that we have a box between four and 9.30, but the latest bar on the chart is really about 11. So what I'm gonna do is make that bar a little bit later, so say 11.20, and I'm gonna set extend right to true. So we, ha we do not have an 11.20 bar yet, for this rectangle. So what we get is actually the box extended to the right. Now, alternatively, we could have just set that to false. And if we do that, what will happen is the box will extend as far as the, the current bar and it will just keep on adding a new bar as we go along. So when a new bar forms, this will just be extended a little bit further to the right. Incidentally, also in terms of the times, if you have seconds, if you want to specify the seconds for a seconds chart, then you would put in the time, for example, 2300, then a decimal point, and then the number of seconds. So let's look at the program. And this is a new version of this program because I decided there was a, some issues with the previous one, that's DT2 with Trade Station 10. And I, looking at the program, I decided it was perhaps overly complicated. So I've changed the way this is, uh, this is done. And I think hopefully you'll see it's uh, more simple. Okay, so let's go down. So. Uh, first of all, we have a method which draws the box. The inputs are a DT point start DT, a DT point end DT, and a string for the zone color, an integer for the zone shading, which is the, the type of shading that we're using, an integer for the zone transparency, which can be any number between uh, zero and 255. And then we have this period one and that is because what I decided to do is for the one period of time would be period one then the other period of time would be period two and we're using that in here to put them into different vectors but let's just look first of all at creating the box uh, we call it zone box in this method rectangle zone box zone box equals rectangle dot create start dt and dt uh, the the color, zone box color, fill, fill color, the fill pattern, the weight, which is hard coded as two, and persist, we've set to true. In other words, if we draw this on a tick and we don't redraw it, then it still remains on the chart. And then we add the rectangle to a vector, in fact, the appropriate vector, depending on which uh, input we put in here, either input one or input two. And then we add the object to the chart. So that is the method. We do a little bit of setting up in a one statement. So we create the vectors just using new vector. Boxes one equals new vector, boxes two equals new vector. We clear the print log and then we set up initial values for DT start time, DT end time one, DT start time two, etc. And the way that we do that is we use the date time object and then we use a point, a period that uh, and then we use from EL date and time and the inputs for that are the date the an integer representing the number the uh, the time 
and then a fractional portion, which we multiply by 100, which is the number of seconds. And you might be thinking, well, how do I know what the methods are? If you just type in date, time, then period, and you have the autocomplete, and I've got enable autocomplete switched on. So that can be found in the options. In other words, tools, options, and then enable autocomplete. If we do period again, you'll see all the options. And the one that we're using here is from EL date and time. And what you could also do, if you select that, you can also right click that and say definition. And then you can get some examples of using it. And you probably, uh, you would just need to go down into methods and find that specific method and you will see some of the, uh, here we go. In fact, it's a, an overloaded method. So you can see you've got one with just date and time. You've got another one with uh, date, time, and seconds. The next thing we do is the program goes through, runs on every bar. It recognizes using the bar date time of each bar, a time when we've just gone into a zone. So we're using the start time and we're saying if the bar date time is greater or equal to the start time or the previous bar was less than the start time because we may not have a bar for the exact time that we've got as an input. If that occurs, in other words, we've just moved into a zone, then we set up the values of the DT start time using the date of the current bar. And just as we did above the uh, that method from EL date time, we do the same thing for the end time, except if the start time is greater than the end time. For example, the start time is 2200 hours, the end time is 0200. Then we clearly have a situation where the start and the end are not on the same day. In this program, we assume that it's the next day, so we add a day to the end time. Then we clear the vector that we're using for this first time zone, which is uh, boxes one uh, dot clear. And then we call the method to draw the, the boxes using the inputs that we just discussed. And as you remember, within the method, the box is put, the rectangle is put into a vector. Now we do exactly the same for the second time zone, except instead of using start time one, end time one, etc., we put in start time two. Now also I should mention that you may have noticed that in this calling of the method, we're actually putting in the start time twice. We're putting it DT start time one and DT start time one. And that is because in this program, what we're gonna do as each bar goes along, we're gonna extend the rectangle until we get to the end. And this just makes it simpler to program. So that creates the initial rectangles but now we need to extend the rectangles. So all I'm saying is if the bar date time is greater than the start time and the bar date time is less than or equal to the end, the, the DT end time, so greater than the DT start time or less than or equal to the DT end time one, then what we do is we go through the vector. So we go through each rectangle in the vector and there'll be five of them, but I've just used the count here and it's a zero based counter. So we go through the vector, we put the rectangle into a box, which is just uh, one of our uh, variables, uh, type rectangle. We find the endpoint price of that box, which we're gonna use in a second. Let's just skip this thing here. Then we set the endpoint, and we do that. We've just got two inputs, the DT point, create of the bar date time, which is the current bar, and that value 23. So it just keeps the rectangle increasing in size until we get to the actual end. Now, this section here, if it is the last bar on the chart, and if that user input extend right is true, then we also set the box extend right equals true. And that causes the effect where the bar then goes across to the right of the screen. When we've done that, we set this variable here, x right one to true. And then another inequality, we're saying 
when we are no longer in the zone by using this not qualifier and extend right, which is the user input is set to true, then we go through the rectangles, again, going through the vector, we set the extend right to false and we turn, we take, uh, turn x right one to false as you'll see above that we were checking for or rather in this section here we're checking for x right one so we won't do this again once that's been done because that has now been set to false then we do exactly the same for the second time zone and this maybe could have been programmed in a slightly more sophisticated way so that we weren't repeating bits of code but I think this makes it easier to see what's going on exactly the same for the, the second time zone so what I'm going to do is replace the version 2 with this version 3 on the web page which the uh, the program is available at zero cost to Gold Pass members. If in the past you have bought the version two version and you would prefer to have this one, then please just email me and uh, I'll be happy to send it to you. Uh, another thing just to mention is, in fact, let's just go to a, another chart and this is a seconds chart. So let's put in some values to draw something on the seconds chart. So we're about 11, 14, 31, just to demonstrate how to use the, uh, the seconds capability. So the first one, 11, 15 point, then let's just say 33, and we'll go to 11, 16, 10. And we'll just make sure that we're in the range approximately let's just change those so we've got 1.10 1 as the high and 1.0035 let's make it 7.0070 okay so we're going to start at 11.15.33 ah we've just gone past that okay I'll be a little bit more quickly 11.15 or 11.16.33 going to 11.16 40, 45, okay. So we'll just wait until we get to the 11, 16, 33, and we should see the rectangle start being drawn. Okay, there it started. And as each bar is formed, it is extended to the right because we don't have extend right set to true so we're not x or what i should say the end is changed to the most recent bar and you'll see that uh, we got to that most recent bar and then the rectangle is drawn you'll also notice that of course these rectangles do not need to be separate so you could have you could specify one of the zones to encompass all the other rectangles if you wish to and as I mentioned on the web page, this is not necessarily a program that you would use in itself, or that you, you may well do, but something that you could use some of these techniques in your own programs. Anyway, if you like this, please like it. Please uh, go to markplex.com and join the email list, and please subscribe to this video channel. Thank you very much.